Good evening, family. Good evening, good evening, good evening. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello. Hey, everybody. I'm going to give you guys a second to get in here. I want to welcome you to our time together here. Uh, a little bit of Periscope Church, Facebook Live. Um, and we do this every week, every week. So I love you guys. I see Miss Marissa. Hey, Miss Marissa, something new. Miss Lisa, love and happiness. Miss Cooper, leak nights. Hello, God bless you. Hey, come on. Hi, how are you, Cynthia? Miss Stephanie, hi, la senorita Becky, senora. Wow, your hair's so pretty like that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, I'm joining in for the first time. Welcome. I think it's a Takia. Takia, let's say. So over here, I have Facebook Live. Over here, I have, no, this is Periscope. Over here, I have Facebook Live. Over here, Clau, hello. Vanessa Ortega, hello. I have Miss Leslie. She's already shared on Facebook. If you guys would go ahead. Good, good, good. Go ahead. I hear you say forever will be my first, my number one first. That's awesome. Miss Kanji, oh, Stephanie, I miss you too. I miss you too. I miss you guys. Um, so go ahead and begin to share. Um, we're not going to be long tonight, uh, but we got Brooklyn, I mean Bronx, excuse me, checking in. There's also Instagram Live. So really, when did Instagram go live? I'm going to have to check that out. I have three apparatuses going on all at the same time. Hey there, Mr. Edwards. How are you, James? Great to see you on there. Hello, Ruth. Brooklyn is present. Okay, very good, very good, very good. What's the Facebook page name, Joanne Rosario Condry? So hopefully, I have two. Um, that's a whole long story. Um, but look for the picture of me with the orange, uh, with the orange scarf that I wear all the time that I love, um, so that you guys can find that. But thank you guys for joining me tonight. Thank you guys for sharing, sharing, sharing. Um, and I don't know, you're such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, check out Insta. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out. So Detroit is checking in. Vanessa from London. Hey, Vanessa. Ema, always present. Christina, hello. I'm glad. D'Angela, always present. Man, I have my, my good and faithful brothers and sisters that get on here. And so very quickly, let's just um, pray and get started. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We, we thank you for your loving kindness, God. And we bless you right now. And we ask, God, that you would just be here with us. Be among us, Father God. And just uh, extend your heart and communicate uh, your heart and your mind to me and to those that are watching, Father God. Those that are taking uh, this time to just join in with us, Father. We just thank you. We bless you. And we ask, God, that you would just continue to help us grow in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Gloria, um, thank you for joining us tonight. Sonona, hey there. Uh, Esteban, that was my grandfather's name. So, tonight is a little bit different because, um, you know, usually you guys know me. Hi, Elgin. You guys know me as, you know, fireball, you know, preacher. Yes, and welcome first timers. Any of our first time guests, we hope that you'll join us again and you'll make us a part of your um, your weekly routine. Um, but tonight is a little bit different because you guys know me most of the time as the fireball preacher and I'm going to come and I'm going to bring you the word and I'm going to say, love you too, Sonona, miss you too. But you guys know, you know, I'm miss, you know, holiness, let's seek God, let's hear the Holy Spirit, let's, you know, let's do what we got to do, let's be responsible in our walk with God and you know, I'm super passionate about that. Um, but kind, but God started dealing with me kind of just uh, a little bit differently today um, because I ended up having a conversation with my daughter and it's not the first time that this has happened, but I think, hey, Miranda, I think that today it really impacted me in a different way. And I'm talking about my oldest and she's probably listening somewhere even though she's supposed to be sleeping. Um, but, you know, she's... Um, Ariana's a very sensitive girl. You know, she feels a lot of things. And um, I think that sometimes uh, parents can have so much going on that we we forget how to listen 
okay and we forget how to pay attention to what our kids are feeling uh, what they're thinking what what is going on with them and so today um, we started uh, we came home you know we had a lot of busy day uh, and then you know getting through the homework and all that kind of stuff hey Vanessa I love you too pastora and so um, when we got home you know I had to talk to my daughter about some things because we had you know a few um, just behavior issues today that we kind of had to deal with and um, it, it just got interesting because she started sharing her heart there we go, Ima knows what I'm talking about. She started sharing her heart. Now, mind you, she's six years old. And she started getting very, very emotional. She started kind of really, you know, sharing um, just, she's six, she's six years old. And um, so she, she started really sharing her heart and God started kind of really dealing with me to say, hey, you know, you need to pay attention. You need to, you need to start really, really paying attention because there's some things going on on the inside of her that you don't, uh, that either you haven't seen or you haven't known, hola Mimi, or that you haven't known uh, is going on. And I don't know if we have anybody watching um, that already has older children. Maybe you're watching and you have, you know, teenagers or you have, um, you know, pe people that children, sorry, I'm trying to check something here on my phone, uh, children that are maybe a little bit, um, a little bit older and you may have seen, this is not trying to cooperate with me. Maybe you, you have seen what I'm talking about where, um, you know, you kind of start seeing, you know, things going on with your kids and so even in just sharing tonight don't they all go through a phase yeah they do Ch children go through phases but I think that it's important for us as parents to realize that to us it feels like they're going through a phase but to them it is so real and it is so serious and it is so heavy uh, to you know the emotions that they feel you know, they feel the pain. They feel, you know, maybe the rejection from something that happened at school. They feel, and to them, it is just as hard and it is just as rough as the way you felt the first time that your heart was broken. Like, like the, 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 the seriousness of that feeling and that emotion, um, even though they may be five or six, that's what they're feeling. And when they're expressing to us as their parents how they feel. If we don't learn how to stop and listen, if we don't learn how to slow down and and really take what they're saying serious and not just kind of, you know, push it off as, oh, you just, you know, you, you just being a drama queen or you just, you know, if we blow them off, yes, we have to acknowledge. And tonight I just want to you know, just for a few minutes, just speak to you from my heart. You know, I, I, I'm a mom. I don't know it all. My daughters are very young, six and four, um, you know, young. And it's like what appears exactly what appears to be small to us is very, very, very big to them. And so, um, you know, I'm just sharing my heart from the aspect of what I'm learning and, um, what what I'm beginning to see and and in as adults and in our own relationship with God as we are uh, praying and we're seeking uh, the face of God and we're saying God teach us and guide us and we want to be great in you and we want to you know conquer the world and we want to evangelize and we want to heal the sick and we want to stand on stages and we want to preach and we want to sing and we want to do all of these things for God but we cannot forget of the very precious things that he has placed right in front of us in our children. We, we cannot forget the very precious things that God has placed right in front of us, our families, our homes, uh, the atmosphere of our home, the spirit that flows in our home, uh, the, 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 the love, the warmth, you know. And it's so funny because, um, you know, after we kind of worked through you know what we work through and I'm not going into details of, of, of course because I want to respect uh, you know her feelings and her privacy um, 
they appreciate when we also can connect with them when we go through some things. That's very, very true. Um, working on having more patience. See, this is an area for all parents, you know, because it's like at one time you were a child, but now you're a parent. Now you have little people. And for those of you that maybe do not have children yet, you know, the day is coming, the time is coming. And, you know, so we have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us um, be more patient. We have to ask the Holy Spirit, you know, screaming at them all the time is not the way to get them to hear you and listen to, you know, sometimes you may have to be like, hey, you know, come on. Or, you know, you may have to elevate your voice a little bit but you don't want their memories to be oh daddy was always screaming at me or mommy was always screaming at me you don't want their memories to be you know oh mommy and daddy were uh yes you know they were so busy that they never listened and they never paid attention and you know i really took yeah don't scar them i really took my time tonight um i even put the little one to bed so that I could have time with the older one. And she just really, really began to just pour out her heart. And I mean, every, the tears and everything, like, you know, the tears and the emotion and the feeling and the seriousness of what she was saying to me, like the real seriousness of mommy, this is how I feel. And I don't feel like I can go on like this. And I'm looking at her like, oh my God, like, you're six years old. Like, what do you mean? What do you say? <laughs> what are you saying to me? And just really trying to understand what she was saying and how she was feeling and why she was feeling the way she was feeling and you know so we're, I, I just I pray tonight I pray tonight that God will give you the ability to listen I pray tonight that God will give you the ability to know your children as people as little people you know to be able to value their feelings and value their emotions and you know yes you you'll have to draw the line when you have to draw the line like you know you know we're, we were having all this bonding time and we were talking and we were really really sharing and then it just started really getting late i can remember at five being very sensitive and different than most children my age wow that's a comment from stephanie wow it's true i mean all children are different but, you know, so with my Ariana, it's like, you know, we were having the buddy-buddy time and we were bonding and we were talking, you know, but then I had already asked her to go to bed about four different times and she was still kind of extending. And so I had to, I had to say, okay, um, now we're, we're being friends right now, but if I have to tell you again, then I'm going to have to be the other mommy. So which one do you want? Do you want the you know, friend mommy, and you listen, and you do what I'm asking you to do, or do you want, you know, the other mommy? She was like, no, I want the friend mommy. And I said, okay, so I need you to go to bed because I need to, you know, do what I gotta do. And and we've had our time, you know, we've had our time. I have been respectful, I have listened, we have prayed together, we have communicated, we're, we've decided that we're gonna continue to talk more and more. Um, about the way you feel and so it was just really really good and it brought to mind um this scripture which is in ephesians 6. ephesians 6 uh says this it says this it says children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with promise okay so whenever Yes, their emotions need to be addressed because it continues to affect them as they grow older. Yes, so look at this. So the word of God, we always bring that up to children. We always say when we need them to do what we want them to do, we always say to them, you need to be obedient because the word of God says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and your mother and all will go well with you, right? This is the first commandment with a promise. This is what it says in Ephesians 6, that it may be well with thee and thou may live a long life. So we're so quick to let them know, hey, you're supposed to obey mommy and daddy. If you want a long life, if you want to live in the blessing of God, you need to obey. You need to listen. You need to do what mommy and daddy are saying. We're very, very quick to go to that. But look at the next verse. Many times we do not read verse four. And verse four says this, and fathers, which of course it includes fathers and mothers. But it says, and fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Do not provoke your children. 
fathers, mothers, parents. Don't provoke your children, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So this is a two-way street. And even when we look at the word of God, God is saying to us, do not overlook the feelings of your children. Do not overlook where they are. Do not overlook what they're going through. Do not overlook their pain when they express pain to you. Because this is the thing with children. They will test to, to and try to see, okay, I'm going to open up to mom. I'm going to open up to dad. And if you do not handle them with care, they may not do it again. They may not open up to you again. I mean, you have a few times for them to be really, really, you know, um, sensitive about something for them to come and say, mommy, this is how I feel. Daddy, this is how I feel, you know? And if we don't listen, they may shut down. If we just go ahead and scream at them and say, just do what I tell you to do. You know, there may be some times for that where you have to say, listen, I've listened to you and I understand what you're saying, but I need you to do what I'm telling you to do because I'm your authority. And yes, sometimes you have to draw the line in the sand, but it can't be every time. Every time can't be just be quiet. Every time can't be just do what I tell you to do. Every single time cannot be uh, just the mandate. Not every time. Sometimes, yes. But sometimes we still have to listen. There may be something of value that they feel and they're thinking. And let me tell you, they will blow you away. They will blow you away. Bring them up. Thank you, Corey. Train, educate, discipline, prune, bend toward a specific way of growth. Bend, but don't break. Yes, because we can. We, we have the ability to crush them when they're being open and when they're being vulnerable. And we cannot afford to do that because you know what? These are God's children. And because they're God's children, they have been entrusted to us. And because they've been entrusted to us, we have to treat them with care. We have to treat them with love. And we have to treat them with respect. You may not have thought about that before. Okay, but we have to respect our children in the same way that we expect them to respect us. It is important for us to learn how to respect them. So it's a two way street, even though we are the authority in our lives. God is our authority. God is our Lord. Jesus is our Lord. God is our authority. But guess what? The Holy Spirit still respects us. He respects the way we feel. He respects our emotions. If we don't invite him in, he won't come in. Even though he is Lord, he is Lord, he is Lord. So I think that God wants us to learn how to really have a different, a different, uh, where is that? I don't want to block the wrong person. There we go. A different approach, a different approach uh, with our children. So I was really encouraged to share that with you guys tonight. And, um, and I hope that. I hope that it's a blessing to you and I hope that you're encouraged to listen and you're encouraged to take time and you're encouraged to pay attention, you know, pay attention, teach us mother, pay attention because they'll show you clues about how they feel. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they act out because they're feeling a certain way about something and we don't know what they're feeling. We don't know what's going on in their mind. And yes, we don't want uh, the window of opportunity, those years of formation. We don't, um, we don't want to let those moments pass by. So right now we have a, a comment from Miss Sherry. She's saying that her 16 year old is shutting down. And I pray, I pray that somehow God will um, give you the wisdom, give you the wisdom, shower them, with love shower I don't know if it's a son or a daughter but shower shower them with love and just be there and be present and do your best do your best to just be there and to love them because eventually some way somehow the love yes thank you Cynthia the love draws them you know because all children they are, they're hungry for love. They're also hungry for discipline. They don't really realize. But yes, and that's a good point as well, Chris, is that a lot of parents need healing themselves because of their childhood. 
So regardless of what your uh, experience was uh, growing up, what your experience was, maybe your experience with your parents was not a good one, but you know what? The Holy Spirit and your Heavenly Father can teach you, can teach you how to be a good parent, can teach you how to give your children maybe what you never got. God is that good that he can teach us how to be everything that our children need. So, you know, that that's really all that I had on my heart for tonight. I don't want to, um, you know, be religious when we do our time together and, and, and we do our Periscope Church. Uh, but I was just really impacted. I was very impacted by uh, that conversation with my with my daughter. My son changed when I loved him more and more and started talking to him about things well. So that's from Miss Ema. Total forgiveness by R.T. Kendall helped me heal and I pass it along to others. That's from Miss Kelly. That's some good advice. So um, we pray today in the name of Jesus that God will uh, teach us to listen, that God will teach us to, uh, to be patient, that God, wow, congratulations on the birth of your baby victory, praying in the name of Jesus that God will um, help us all become the parents that we need to be so that we can raise our children in the admonition of God, that that because of the, of the love and the passion that our children see in us for them and for God, because I think sometimes children see the passion that we have for God, but they don't see that we have that same passion for them. And I think that many times that may turn them off. That may turn them off from wanting anything to do with God. Thank you, Miss Karen. That's right. Train up a child. And I think that, you know, that training um, has a lot to do with correction. That training has a lot to do with listening. That training has a lot to do with paying attention. That listening has a lot to do with um, molding and, and explaining like, like as parents, let's not be afraid to explain. Let's not be afraid to explain. I, I you know, I, I don't know it all. Okay, I don't, I don't know it all. You know, and and let me say this, Ema, some some of the old school ways are good, but some of the old school ways are not good. So, for example, you know, the respect, the discipline, you know, all of those things from the old school is good. But we have to realize that right now, especially children now that are between the ages of 3 and 10, 12, 13, they're a new generation. They're a new generation. They're an information generation. They're an intelligent. They're an intelligent generation. And we have to know how to shift and use the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to be good parents to them. They're constantly taking in information. So to them, just because we say, do it because I said so, I don't think that it's going to be enough. I don't think that it's going to be enough. I think that it's important to learn, not that we have to explain ourselves, you know, because yes, we're the parent and yes, we're the authority. But when you choose to explain to a child, okay, it is showing them, I respect you. It is showing them, I know that you're smart and that you can understand what I'm telling you and you're saying to them with your actions, I want to give you this information so that you uh, can make a good decision based on the information that I'm giving you. Does this make sense? So for example, you know, sometimes a cartoon will come on and you know, you have the girls that are showing, you know, their midriff. Cause even in cartoons, you have cartoons where the little girls show their midriff. And, and so you see the belly button and you see, you know, them, you know, wearing really, really short skirts or short shorts. And so when something like that comes on, you know, I used to be quick to turn it off, but now, you know, I still turn it off, but I do take a minute to give instruction before I turn it off. And I say, you see that? Yes, mommy, I do, I see that. Okay, well, I need you to understand that as a daughter of God and as a holy person, that is not what we do. Well, what do you mean, mommy? We do not show our body. We do not show our body belongs to God. Our body belongs to Jesus. Our body belongs to Holy to the Holy Spirit. And one day when you get married, when you get married, your body will belong to your husband. So you don't want to show everybody 
your body when that body does not belong to them. It is something that is precious. It is something that is uh, important to protect. And you don't want other people having dirty ideas looking at you when, you, when that's not uh, their body. Biblical sound wise, absolutely. And so, you know, even though in them there's a struggle between their flesh and their spirit because they see it and they say, oh, that's cute and I want to look cute like the girls on the TV. But then you have the voice of their parent that is training them and teaching them in the admonition of God that says, hey, this is not who we are and this is not what we do. This is not how we dress. Look how mommy dresses. Why does mommy dress the way mommy dresses? Because mommy's body belongs to God and mommy's body belongs to daddy. It doesn't belong to anybody else. So no one else has a right to touch it or look at it. And so because nobody should look at it, I'm going to cover it out of respect for God, out of respect for myself, and out of respect for my husband. And so they'll say, okay, mommy. Sometimes even to the point where they'll walk up to somebody else and say, like I remember Ariana being small and we were at a restaurant. And this girl had on a dress that was like, you know, I don't, there's nothing wrong with, you know, tube tops, but, you know, I tell them, you know, you have to, uh, you know, have straps and this and this and that. And so we're sitting in IHOP and she was like maybe four years old and there was a girl in the other booth and she goes over and she says, hey, you're supposed to put on a sweater or a shawl or something. You need to cover up your shoulders. And I was like, oh my God, I was I was so, I was embarrassed, but then at the same time, I was, you know, excited because I could see that the things that I had been teaching her were making a mark, you know, in her. Uh, when she hears other people singing secular music or secular songs and, you know, and they come in the house talking about, you know, dap and this and this and that. And I'm like, I'm sorry, we don't dap. But mommy, everybody daps and this and this and that. I said, no. I said, that is not what we do. I said, because dapping is not worship to God. And we were, uh, we were born to worship God, you know? So, um, what was that one song? Oh, cause they, cause, uh, everybody was singing that whip nanny song for a minute. So I was like, one day I was like, you know what? I was like, enough. I was like, all this whip nanny, get all this whip nanny. I, out of the house and then I, I, I started I made up a song I'm trying to remember how it and it was something like um I love Jesus more than the whip nanny I love Jesus more than the whip nanny I don't whip no I don't nay nay no no I don't whip no I don't nay nay no no I love Jesus more than the whip nanny because it was like I had to give them something other than you know, because everybody was on this whole whip nay nay thing. And I was like, no, this is not who we are. This is not what we do, you know? And so, but then at the same time, it's like, I'm listening. I'm trying to pay attention. And I just, I encourage you to do the same. Just do your best to try to pay attention. Do your best to love them. Do your best to encourage them. Do your best to correct them. If they do something that's wrong, yes, correct them. Every once in a while, they may need to get a spanking. They may need, you know, if they're really out of line. Uh, but we have to also spend that time communicating with them, loving them, you know, uh, listening to them, talking to them, embracing them, um, and telling them who they are, really telling them who they are. So, you know, I was pretty excited because at the end of the conversation today, Ariana was kind of like, yeah, mom, you're, you know, you're the best mom. And I said, well, why do you say that I'm the best mom? And, um, sorry, I, I, I I was like, Ariana, why, why do you say that? She said, because you care about my feelings. And I was like, mm, you know, I mean, that's that's what she said. She said, you know, I care. She felt like I I cared about her feelings enough to stop and, you know, talk to her and have that time with her today. So, um, let's pay attention and let's listen. Um, and somebody was saying something about, uh, if only I had you on spiel diet as my parenting mentor, girl, the Holy Spirit is all of our parenting mentors because every child is different. 
every child is different and we have to really really get the mind of God and the mind of the Holy Spirit to um to give them what they need specifically because not every child is the same you can't have just one rule book and say okay these are all the rule even if you have three children they'll all be different and you have to deal with them differently and so you know we pray that just God will just give you the mind and give you the you know the wisdom the wisdom that you need okay because trust me they 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 are alert and they know what is going on hi Brenda I love you too they're alert they know what's going on they know what they want okay and don't think that they're too young to start getting rebellious don't think that they're too young you know to start getting thoughts of you know uh, depression or suicide or running away or the enemy does not uh, he doesn't have a an age limit he will start at a very very young age to attack them uh, so we have to make sure that we cover them we have to make sure that we cover them okay so I love you guys that's all I have for you tonight uh, and um, just know that you guys are always in my prayers you're always in our prayers you're always in our prayers and so um I want you to just continue to stay stay connected and continue to grow with us um, we had an amazing Bible study yesterday so if you haven't caught that it's still on Periscope or you can uh, go to YouTube make sure that you are uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel you can go to YouTube and uh, go to Joanne Rosario Condry so that you can um, make sure that you stay connected to the Word of God and, and so that you can grow you know that's that's the thing something Miss Cynthia said listened all day that is awesome that's awesome on last Sunday we also had uh, an amazing message that was actually delivered at Rainfire Church by an 11 year old and it was really really just mind-blowing mind-blowing so you know hopefully you guys will be able to catch up with those things but when you subscribe exactly thank you miss Karen when you subscribe you will get you'll get an email every time there's a new uh, a new uh, video that is posted so you can share that with your friends uh, share that with um, you know your family members everybody uh, that is you know in your life you can just share it so that the same thing that is blessing you can bless them um, and as always you know for those of you that give and so into this ministry you can do that at rainfirechurch.org or you can uh, text rainfire to seven seven nine seven seven for those of you that need the giving information we need these teachings yes so if you need to email me joanne at rainfirechurch.org okay joanne at rainfirechurch.org okay so rainfirechurch.org is the website joanne at rainfirechurch.org is uh the email um pray for me as i pray for you that we can really be the parents that um that we need to be for our kids that we can really 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 be the parents that we need um, we need to be we have not love and happiness we have not made the official uh, uh, official announcement yet but we are going to push up the women's conference because um, I just feel that July is too too late it was originally scheduled for July but we are going to push it up okay we're gonna push it up to March we're gonna push it up to March but we have not made the official announcement yet I do not have anything in New York coming up soon we have not made the official announcement yet but we are gonna push up the um, the conference to uh, to March because with everything that is happening things in the spirit have been moving so quickly that I feel like we need to move it up and um you know we just feel like that's that's the right thing to do instead of waiting all the way to July I like I felt like that it's just too long it's just too long things are happening fast things are moving and you know so begin to save begin to believe God for the finances you know do whatever you have to do and God will provide what you need don't even panic and say oh I thought I had more time God is the God of limitless supply so do not even think twice about it okay I love you guys um, thank you thank you for being here with me uh, and just know that you guys are our hearts you really really are and we love you and we bless you okay so have a good night and um, remember Friday morning we have our power prayer call so make sure that you um, 
text a few people and let them know that they need to join you. And right here, Facebook Live and on Periscope at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday morning for our power prayer call, okay? I love you guys, and I think I'm going to go to bed. Yes, I have both of my girls. They um, are all cuddled up in my bed, and today was definitely not a day where I was going to say, go to your bed. We've had a lot of bonding and a lot of emotions. And I have girls, so, you know, that's just what it is. <laughs> just, can you imagine when they're like in their teens and everybody's getting their period at the same time? It's going to be like crazy around here. And Corey's going to be like, oh my God, somebody help me. <laughs> So anyway, hello, Brazil. God bless you. I love you guys. You guys just, you guys make life fun. So anyway, have a good night. Go to bed. Or somebody said there, I think Ema said she's writing papers. So thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to check out Instagram Live. Oh, thank you. I am going to. Absolutely. All right, guys. Have a good night. Five girls. Woo. That is something. Okay, guys. Good night.